anything that I okay. Oh, sorry for the delay. Okay, let's see where we are, right? Um what I, you know, we have been we have not really um talked about Bhagavad Gita for a long time now. Um I hope we can do some justice today. Uh so we were talking about Shankar Bhashya 18th chapter. Uh, let me do one thing. Let me just do you think it'll be good if we just give a brief overview for 10 minutes about um 18th chapter, how Shankar Bhashya deals with it? Will that be useful? Yes, sir. That would be better. Yeah. So thing is, I'm just gonna uh, give some very broad idea. And I'll just look at some simple Bhagavad Gita 18 chapter um, slokas uh, while doing it. That way it's easy. Hold on a second. Let me share the screen. Uh, share Gita Super Shine. It's not doing it. Hold on. Hmm. Bhagavad Gita. So can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So we are here on, um, say, 1850. So but before coming to 1850, there are 50 shlokas in the 18th chapter. I just want to give you some idea about what that is about. Initially, the first few shlokas are about Arjuna's question who asked Krishna, what is the difference between Tyaga and uh, Sanyasa? So Lord Krishna gives um, you know, his introduction in a unique way, saying that several people think that Sanyasa is this, several pe people think Tyaga is this. So he then later on gives a summary and says this is what is Tyaga and this is what is Sanyasa. Pretty much they are the same thing. Shankaracharya takes these verses. We can even go to those verses. Okay, Let me just quickly... Uh, where are the verses? So these are the different options. Say, can I give up karmi karmas? Or only giving karmi karmas is known as tyaga. Giving up all karmas is tyaga. But giving up, um, uh, so yajna dana and tapas karma should not be given up. They, um, so if, everything other than that, we can uh, give up. So there are so many different views uh, on the, uh, the, the topic of tyaga and sannyasa. That's what they're talking about, right? Then Krishna himself says, Tyaga is of three kinds. What are the three kinds? The three kinds are, I will only highlight when Shankarabhashya is very important and different, right? Otherwise, there is no point. So Krishna says, Yajna dana tapa karma should not, uh, should natyajyam karya mevatatu. It has to be uh, done. That is yajna, dana, tapa karma. All these three have to be done. It sh they should not be given up. Karya mevatatu. Yajna danam tapa shaiva pavanani manishinam. All these three, yajna is sacrifice, danam is charity, tapas is meditation. Or uh, tapas is also uh, kaya klesha, that is for purification, you punish your um, body by by doing different things like not eating that much, eating little, that is the upa, you know, upavasa and other kind of um, uh, hardships which will purify your mind, body and mind. But Shankaracharya takes these possibilities that look, Anyway, karma have to be given up by the jnani. So the pure jnani cannot do any karma at all. He is beyond karma. 
he is actually atman he is actually ishvara he is the same as jeevatma uh, he is the same as uh, ishvara he is the same as brahman or atma so if that is the case how can he do actions so the pure atman cannot do any actions so this actions are for the immature agnyanis who can do actions even among agnyanis you, you have satvika rajasa and tamasa type of agnyanis that's how shankaracharya takes it here now if you look at quickly uh etanya pitu karmani thangam tyaktva palani cha kartavyani ti me parta nichitam matam uttamam so among the people capable or eligible for doing karma who are actually ignorant there are different kinds the satvika people will give up the, uh, give up the phala or the fruits of actions and they do it with a devotion to the lord okay uh, so the thing is he, uh, krishna talks about this uh, satvika tyaga tamasa tyaga or rajasika tyaga so that is we are not going to go into all the details of bhagavad gita 18 chapter but we just know as an overview the tyaga is of three kinds that is satvika rajasika and tamasika that shankaracharya also talks about it this is very, this is not really different from any other acharya's view here except that for shankaracharya any person eligible to do karmas are whether any kind of karmas they have to be of a lower order they cannot be gnani gnani cannot involve himself in any karma that is the main idea is this clear i just want to know that the concept given to you is clear do you have do you have any doubts about this this would this is clear clear right okay very good right next let me look at this this is raja satyaga that is if some some people say i am i cannot do all this kind of uh, prescribed duties of the vedas so i will give up because i am lazy so that is, or it is too difficult for me to do that is a rajasik tyaga and that tyaga phala is not uh, will not be uh, they will not obtain the tyaga phala so such such people um, are not doing the satvika tyaga satvika tyagi is give up only the fruits of the actions but not the actions that's what shankaracharya also agrees but the whole uh, area this topic is for the agnyanis that is people who are eligible to do karma according to shankaracharya next a satvika person will will do karma uh because he he thinks he has to do it because it is prescribed in the vedas and he do, he does not have any connection with the fruits or of the actions such is a satvika tyagi that's clear here there is nothing phenomenal here this is also about the satvika tyaga okay here is an important point shankaracharya's uh commentary on this particular verse is slightly different from others nahi dehabrata shaktyam tyaktum karmani asheshatah yastu karma palatyagi satyagi abhidiyate any person who is dehabrata dehabrat means the person in general if you look at it the, the meaning of the shloka seems dehabrat means that person who has a body so anybody with a body cannot leave karmas completely so the tyagi here mentioned is the person who gives up the fruits of karmas but not the karmas themselves because karmas can never be given up nahi dehabrata shakyam tyaktum karmani asheshatah that's what is said here shankaracharya says what is the dehabrata he says dehabrata means dehatma bhi mana van dehabrata the person who thinks the body is same as himself or he or she who think 
that the body is sa same as themselves. That person is a Dehabrita. That means he has identified himself or herself with the body. Na Viveki, Sahi Deva. So he is not the Viveki or the person with the right intellect. Sahi Veda Vinashinam. So in the second chapter itself, Veda Vinashinam Mithyam, Ena Majamapyam, Katham Sapurusha Partha Kam Ghatiati Hantikam. So a person cannot have any kind of knowership or uh, enjoyership or anything like that. Who knows clearly that Atman is imperishable? So he does not have Kartritva or agency or Bhoktritva or enjoyership or Gnatritva or no worship. Nothing he has. He is a Jnani. So if the person has identification with the body, then he is not a Jnani. So an Ajnani who is a Dehabrit or who is inside this body, who thinks that this body is same as that person, cannot give up any karmas, whether it is Nitya Karma, Naimitya Karma, Kamya Karma, it doesn't matter what karma it is. That person cannot give up any karma. karma. So a person who gives up karma phala or the fruits of the actions, he will be known as Tyagi. This is Krishna's uh, opinion here. Shankaracharya agrees. Only thing he says that a jnani can give up karma, but a, a person who identifies himself or herself with the body cannot give up karma. So there is no issue. So Shankaracharya does not find any uh, problem with him interpreting in this at all. Now, Anishta Mishtam Mishtam Chatravidam Karmana Param Bhavatya Tyagi Nam Pretya Natukkan Sanyasi Nam Pichate. So, here Lord Krishna says there are, there are three, three types of effects. Anishta is undesirable. Sh uh, Shankaraja explains further about what is undesirable. We can go into de depth on it, not necessary. Um, so, any kind of um, three different kinds of anishta is that which is undesirable, like lower naraka gati. Ishtam means deva dilakshanam, like the devata uh, loka. Mishram means sukha and dukkha is, mish, uh, is combined in the manusha jati. So, all the three types of effects, that means after death, people can go to any of these states, that is, go down to naraka or go become a devata or stay as a human being. All these are possible after death only for a person who has not given up atyagi, who is not atyagi. After death, such a person will come back to another life in any of these types of sharira. So, anishtam mishtam cha trividam karpana palam bhavati atyaginam pretya natu sanyasi nam kuchita. This is very important. But a true sanyasi has given up everything, attachment to body, even thinking that he is the body and he doesn't have anything to do with anything related to the body. Body is just there. He is a jivan mukta. Such a person does not experience after death the three types of possibilities that is rebirth in a manusha loka or in narakadi uh, tiriyak means like a worm or uh, creatures so any of such births or even devata type of births will not occur to a jnani but for an ajnani these these are the only possibilities that person has to be born again is this clear? Yes. 
so here interest, uh, there are five uh, five reasons for any action so here shankara uh, shankaracharya uh, enumerates it slightly differently see the even the next one next shloka says that right that is adishtana uh, each one is uh, has given you know adishtana is like sharira usually but shankaracharya says it also it is also like like dislike hatred happiness sorrow they are all adishtana according to shankaracharya karta is a upadikrita lakshana bhokta that means due to the adjuncts like mind body intellect this atman is known as a karta or a doer he is not the doer okay karanam cha prathak vidam vividhascha prathak yeshtaha daivam cha yatra pachamam here actions the the pranas our activities they are all uh, another set of you know another one of those five but the fifth one daivam cha yatra pachamam daivam here is according to shankara shankaracharya panchamam purnam adityadi chakshuradi anugrahakam that means these are like the aditya and the devata other devatas who are responsible for our eyesight and other kind of sensual activities like hearing touching tasting so these are all controlled by devatas and they they are daiva for other acharyas daivan chayavatra panchamam is actually the supreme brahman here for shankaracharya daiva is only a some kind of a devata why is it like that why does shankaracharya say that daiva here does not refer refer to the supreme brahman anybody i am just questioning you because i don't want you to sleep off anybody here maybe daivam is directly uh, the jnani whoever is the jnani it can't be right no see here shankaracharya says daiva is the devata adityadi aditya rudra indra marut all these devatas are responsible for some things in in our body right some kind of sensual experience they are all responsible so shankaracharya does not want to associate the word daiva here to the supreme deity supreme brahman no he does not tell me why other acharyas definitely say this daiva is brahman krishna narayana something like that but here shankaracharya does not want to associate this word daiva daiva to the supreme brahman at all anybody else krishna is it because uh, i don't know it might be contradictory but the, the shankara take uh, daiva is akarta here actually i mean i mean i mean to say he does not mention the saguna brahman somewhere does he <clears throat> try to make a meaning of akarta with respect to him correct that's true here if shankaracharya says daiva as atman right atman is akarta and this five there are five reasons for actions and how can atman be a reason for any action it goes against the ideology of advaita right so that is why shankaracharya is very careful to associate the reasons behind any action to be not atman it has to be somebody else other than atman and it has to be the devatas because the indriyas like our eyesight or this one they don't work by themselves they need some kind of a power conscious power they are the devata so all actions are ascribed to non atman or anatma something different from atma so actions can be ascribed to something other than the atman not atman is it clear hope the concepts are getting clear if it, if it is not clear the whole purpose of summarizing shankar bhashya would become not so useful right one query here yeah uh, as per advaita uh, can anything be anatma
Yes. Yes. Because everything else is product of Maya. Right? So all the actions of we are studying now, Bhagavad Gita, we are talking about it. So many people are on Zoom. They have given up so many interesting things to come to Zoom. Whatever may be the reason. Right? All these things, are, what are we talking about? It has to be not Atman. Because Atman cannot be in any action. This is superimposed on Atman. All the activities of every eight, every one of us, 8 billion people, 40 trillion insects, wh whatever, right? Actions of everyone, that is all anatman. Atma is but, not in this state of action at all. But Maya is also taken to be a power of Brahman, a part of Brahman. See, Maya does not exist from the from the from the view of Atman, right? See, yes. Atman. When when we look at Atman from here as bound people, as bound in this samsara, we say there is a Saguna Brahman, and that Saguna Brahman is nobody else other than Brahman. Okay, Saguna Brahman is same as Atman, but we think it is Saguna from here. Okay, but as we go deeper and deeper and deeper. And by the grace of that Saguna Brahman, we know that we are all Atman and all rest, everything else is illusory and not so not existing. So okay. what is an Atma? That we think it exists. The, the difference is the body-mind or the body, uh, we're thinking that uh, we are our body. Identification, identification of body with ourselves. Okay. Thank you. All right, yeah. Okay, now let's go quickly. So anything people do, there are five reasons for any action. Which are they? If that is the case, there are five we already was enumerated. If that is the case, if somebody thinks that, here Shankaracharya is very careful. See, karta here, there is a word karta here, right? Sati karta aramatmanam kevalam tu yaha. There is a word karta. Similar in the back, in the, the uh, adhishtanam tata karta. So karta is also one of the reasons for actions. Right? So the same karta is mentioned in two shlokas later. So the, who is this karta is a question. Shankaracharya says, if some self alone or atman alone is the karta, if somebody says that, that person is not educated. Akrita buddhi, that means he is a deluded person. His mind is deluded. His intellect is uh, erroneous. Durmati hi. So what he says is here, carefully, Shankaracharya mentions that here, uh, the word um, karta to refer to this Atman, which is not really the actor at all. So who is the actor? Who is the agent? Everything is, they're all imposed, superimposed on Brahman. Now, Esenahankrato Bhavo, Buddhityasyan Elipyate, Hatwapisa Iman Loka, Nahanti, Nanibadjate. It's interesting shloka, not very different from, only thing is, Esenahankrato uh, Bhavo, uh, that means if there is no Ahankara, person who does not have any ahankara, or if, if his mind, intellect is not tainted by anything else, even if that person kills everybody in the world, nahanti nalibhadyate, he does not kill, really kill, and he is not bound by anything. What does it mean? This is Shankara, this is original Bhagavad Gita itself, it's difficult to understand here. Original uh, Bhagavad Gita is hard. So Shankaracharya takes this. Look, if somebody associates themselves that they are the body, then if they go and kill, that means that they are bound by the rules and regulation and also their actions. And they will pay for what they have done. They are bound. But if a person is beyond this body identification, 
he will not do anything anyway. And if at all something happens due to him, that is because of the divine will of Supreme Brahman or Saguna Brahman. All actions occur due to Maya, that is Saguna Brahman's power. And it is not because this person has not identified himself with his body, he is not acting. But Brahman is acting, not he. So Atman is not acting. So a Jnani will not get into any trouble. Because he is not associated himself, he is not stuck in this body. He doesn't think that the body, body is same as himself. Is it clear? Any questions on this? I'm going with a very quick overview just to get the concept straight, that's all. And if you get the concept, I'm happy. If you don't get the concept, please tell me what you cannot, what you're not understanding. Then I can explain to you further. Can we understand this uh, shloka uh, to mean uh, it, it can refer to such persons as King Janaka? Yeah, definitely. Yes, because King Janaka can act and be a, a king and do anything which are kingly activities. But he is not really doing anything because he is not as identified, he has not identified himself with the kingdom, being a king, or any actions thereof, like protecting people, taking care of things. None of them he is actually doing. We'll definitely go through much more details of the shloka when we come to the 18th chapter. Right now, as we as already we are we know why we are doing this, right? Because long time back people were confused about Shankara Ramanja Madhu Bhasha and says, okay, why don't we get an overview concept of all these three? That's why we are trying to summarize Shankara Bhasha. Hope at this level it is okay. We can come back if we have doubts. Or even this what, uh, simple summary is taking long time. So now, interesting thing is, Krishna himself separates the topics into different things. Jnana, Jnaya, Parijnata, Trividha, Karma Chodana. Any activity inclu includes the knowledge, what is to be known, and the knower. Karanam Karma Karte Iti Trividha Karma Sangdaha. The karma can be summarized into the instrument, the action karma and the doer, agent, karta. So they, they take three different uh, you know, concepts. Every action needs some knowledge, the object of knowledge and the knower. And action requires the instrument, karana, karma, action itself, karta or the doer. So these are three, six possibilities here. So karma sangraha is the three. Karma chodana, that which makes action happen is the knowledge, the object of knowledge and the novel. So this is what it is. Krishna himself says that. Now they separate these into whether these are sattvic, rajasic or tamasic. Let's see how it goes. So in everything in the world, a person sees only one entity. Ekam bhavam avyayam, imperishable one entity. If he sees that, that jnana is sattvika jnana. Avikdam, avivaktam vibhakteshu, tat jnanam vidhi sattvikam. Even though there are so many differences, separations, differences between you, me, everything. Avivaktam, that which is not separated. That which is which has no parts. If somebody sees that, that person becomes sattvic person. Ah, look at the sentence of Shankaracharya. Yani dvaita darshanani tani asamyak bhutani. 
राजसानी तामसानी चाहिए न साक्षात संसार उच्छित ये भवंती लुक एट हाउ शंकराचार्य कंडेम्स द द्वैत दर्शन एनीथिंग व्हिच सिंग दैट देयर इज अ द्वैत डिफरेंस बिटवीन एंटिटीज मेनी डिफरेंट फिलॉसफीज व्हिच एक्सेप्ट द्वैत तानि असम्यक भूतानि दे आर नॉट वेल थॉट अबाउट राजसानी दे आर राजसिक तामसिक टाइप ऑफ फिलॉसफीज न साक्षात संसार उच्छित ये संसार उच्छित ये भवंती दे के नॉट टेक अस आउट ऑफ संसारा पावरफुल स्टेटमेंट राइट लेट्स सी हाउ शंकराचार्य डोंट गेट अपसेट विद दिस काइंड ऑफ व्यूज फाइनली शंकराचार्य डस नॉट डिसएग्री विद भक्ति डस डस नॉट डस नॉट डिसएग्री विद साधना एंड देयर आर स्मॉल डिफरेंसेस एट द एंड दैट्स अबाउट मल्टीप्लेटी not important because they are not philosophical differences here okay again satvika uh what do you call person is explained here that person who is who is not interested in the fruits of action so similarly several of these verses are only explaining about satvika rajasika and tamasika aspects okay now let's go into i'm just quickly moving further these are not difficult and they are not very different between uh, the philo- uh, there's the, there's no major disagreement about this shlokas maybe i should go straight to 1850 this is about the um, the four varnas um, uh, so four varnas uh, shankaracharya has his own any views about this but we don't need to know much about it so here starts the summary of the bhagavad gita as given by shri krishna himself so there are uh, at the end of the 18th chapter krishna summarizes so he talks about swadharma talks about uh, para dharma which is at agnani dharma and agnani dharma for shankaracharya so dharma para dharma would be agnani is so dharma para dharma is gnani is gnani dharma that means uh, you, you cannot take it that way see so dharma is our own dharma uh, um, uh, para dharma is somebody else's dharma that is also valid here what he says is one should not do the other person's dharma that's all it is do what is natural to you and that's that's not a big difference between acharyas so now for the ignorant the natural even though they are erroneous kind of work they are they may they may be they may have some issues but you should not give give up those natural tendencies and act naturally better to act naturally don't take up the dharma of somebody else like a gyan here shankaracharya says once you become pure when you are not tainted or not attached to anything and your your mind is not bogged down by attachments or or um, uh desires then you can attain naiskarmya siddhi that means naiskarmya siddhi means the state of no karma and that is the form of sanyasa here shankaracharya says this is the final real, finally a realized person now 
here is the actual summary. Krishna says, Siddhim prapto yatha brahma tathapno ti nibhoda me. After getting Siddhi, how will I at they attain me? I will tell you the summary of it, which is known as the Jnana Nishta or the higher goal, the higher Nishta of Jnana. So uh, here, Shankaracharya talks about summary to get to him. So the person, basically what he keeps his mind and intellect pure and then with sense control and mind control, giving up all the sensual objects, this person uh, gives up desires and hatred. So what happens next? And he goes alone, go, becomes, uh, you know, he doesn't mix with people, no parties, eats little, and he controls what he talks, what controls his body, controls his body, and controls his speech and mind. And then he does dhyana yoga without any attachment, vairagya. So this is the, so this is the path, Krishna says, is the summary of the entire Gita. So he gives up pride. desires, anger, and thinking that somebody else's wealth is his. Vimucha nirmama shantaha brahma voyaya kalpate. So giving up all this, he will become a paramahamsa paribrajaka, like in, in the text that produces it, paramahamsa paribrajaka. He becomes shanta, contented, peaceful. He is ready to become Brahma and he is the Jnana Nishta. So Jnana Nishta is explained here in the Shloka 53. Jnana Nishta is to be in the state of no pride, anger, desire, completely bereft of all those problems and peaceful. And such a person becomes Jnana Nishta. And he becomes ready to become Brahman. Brahma Bhuya Kalpate, 1855. Such a person does not desire anything and he treats everybody equally. For him, there are no friends or foe. Of course. Labhate. Such a person gets the bhakti of that highest. Mad bhakti is bhakti in Krishna. So look at how Shankaracharya says, Mad bhakti. Here, think about, it's a very interesting thing here. Tamas sarveshu bhuteshu atma upam yena, atma upam yena, sarva bhuteshu sukatukam vasa mami vapashyati tyataha. Na atma darshanam. Atma samadarshan miha tatya vakshamanatvata bhaktiya mama vijanati iti evam bhutaha jnanarishtaha mad bhakti mai parameshware bhakti bhajanam param uttamam lakshanam chaturthim labate chaturvidha bhajante maam iti hi uktam tatha jnanarakshanaya. See, there were in the long time, in the, in the other chapter, uh, Chaturvidha Bhajante Maam was said in the seventh chapter, 16th sloka. There are four types of bhaktas. And the last type is actually a jnani and a bhakta. He is a jnanarishta and he attains bhakti. So Shankaracharya does not discriminate between jnana and bhakti. For Shankaracharya, jnana and bhakti are the same. Just some, the, the juxtaposition, what are the a sequence as to what comes first and what comes later. Initially, they get bhakti, and that bhakti is also the form of knowledge, and the same thing becomes knowledge only, jnana. Because jnana and moksha is prescribed in the, in the Upanishad, Shankaracharya, um, correctly uh, supports the view that it has to be jnana which leads to moksha. Now, 
next stoka. By the way, let me ask you a thing. Am I making sense? Is this useful to you to understand this? Or am I repeating myself all the time? Please give me some this, feedback. This is very useful. Next sloka is an important sloka. Bhaktiyamam abhijanati yavan yashchasmi tatvataha tatomam tatvato gnyatva vishate tadanantaram. Bhaktiyamam abhijanati. So Shankaracharya says bhakti is required. So even though uh, uh, that mom means that Krishna's, Krishna is talking about himself as Advaita, non-dual. Non Chaitanya matrai karasam, which is only consciousness. Ajaram abhayam, that which does not have old age or fear or death. So such a concept of one Atman is obtained, understood through bhakti. Knowing that person, he will enter into me. Jnana does not mean, Vishate does not mean actual pravesha or entry. Okay. It is only becoming one. Because in the 13th chapter, Kshetrajan Chapi Maam Vidhi, it was very clear, 13.2, that such Jnani is same as himself, uh, is same as Ishvara. So there is a lot of other you know details here. We don't need to learn them now. We are just trying to understand concepts. So doing all such karmas, that is. Whether they are good karmas or bad karmas, pratishiddhani, even that which are, which are not prescribed or should not be done as what you call doing such activities with the total surrender to that Vasudeva, Madhya Pashrayaha, Mayarpitam Sarva Bhavaha, that is dedicated, dedicating everything to Vasudeva, Ishvara. That is Vyapashaya here. Sopi Mat Prasadat, even that person with the grace, Mama Ishwarasya Prasadat, with the grace of the Ishwara, Avapnoti Shashvatam Nityam Vaishnavam Padam Avyayam, he attains the Vaishnava Nitya Pada. Vishnu's eternal abode. Did you see his, uh, these? choice words of Mat Prasadat, that means Shankaracharya believes in grace concept. Without the help of that Ishwara, without the help of Vasudeva, one cannot get perfection. So Shankaracharya is no different from other Acharyas here. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. All right. Now we go. Chetasa Sarvakarmani, Maisan Yasamat Parha, Buddhioga Mupashitya Machitta Satutam Bhava. Lord Krishna is telling Arjuna. So, right, have the Viveka Buddhi in your mind. That is, know how to discriminate what is right, what is wrong, discriminate what is Atman and what is not Atman. Sarvakarmani, all actions, Drishta, Drishta, the Drishta, Drishta Arthani. That means, whether you're doing it for something which is a tangible, visible goal, or phala, or that which is invisible, something beyond um, such a such kind of a phala, like birth in you know in a devaloka or whatever it is. So anything you're doing for any kind of goal, mai ishvara sannyasya, dedicating to ishvara, offering everything to that Lord. Yatkaroshi Adashnasi, that is Krishna says, offering everything to Krishna. Uktadnyayena matparaha aham vasudevaha paraha yasya tavasaha tvam matparaha. So Vasudeva is the ultimate goal here. 
and such a person who has vasudeva as the ultimate goal is matpara so having that intellect buddhi yoga okay ashraya ananya sharanatvam not resorting to anybody else machittaha thinking only krishna here mayeva chittam yasya saha yasya tava saha tum machit satatam sarvada bhava so think about me constantly this is the summary of this 1857 machitta sarva durgani mat prasadat tarishasi atha chetvam ahankarat nashroshasi vinankshasi so machittaha means having me in mind o arjuna sarva durgani all difficult problem all incro- uh, all things all obstacles and which are causing the samsara all the stuff which is causing this bondage you will cross over everything with my grace mat prasadat atikramis athachet yeditvam maduktam ahankarat panditah aham iti nashroshasi nagrahishasi tatah vinanchasi if you don't listen to this you will be destroyed vinanchasi vinasham gamishasi don't think you are independent that's what he says if you think ahankamari ahankarama shityana yosyeti thinking with your own pride ahankara thinking that you are the doer if you think that you i am not going to fight if you decide not to fight then all the work is a waste for you mithya yesha vyavasaya nishchaya te tava yasmat prakritihi kshatriya swabhavah tvam niyokshyati then your na- nature as a kshatriya will take over and make you work anyway make you fight anyway because you are fundamentally a kshatriya yeah. you will do what is natural to you even if you one second you are bound by you are bound by your nature you are a kshatriya you have this valor and everything like that that will not go away let's do one thing let's stop at 18.61 ईश्वर सर्वभूतानाृदेशति ब्राह्मयन सर्वभूतानी यंत्रारूढ़ानी माया बिकॉज इफ यू टेक अप द नेक्स्ट यू श्लोक आज वेलकम टू एटीन सिक्सटी सिक्स विच इज सर्वधर्मा परिजा मेक शरण प्रजा दट इज हार्ड श्लोका टू अंडरस्टैंड सो विल कीप द रेस्ट टू द नेक्स्ट प्लान एनी क्वेश्चन स्टिल नाउ आई हेड वन क्वेश्चन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू श्लोका नंबर फिफ्टी एट ओके Sri Shankaracharya's um, commentary on the 58th shloka uh, for anybody to get moksha uh, god or lord krishna has to uh, uh, give his grace yes As for his grace it would happen yes. in that case uh, there seems to be a dvaita bhava here so yeah, there is a dvaita bhava see this is a very good question the dvaita and the residue of dvaita is there in the sadhana portion for shankaracharya the goal portion there is no dvaita but in the sadhana there is dvaita there is in the path to get to the goal there is difference there is definitely needs to be support of the vasudeva he is a saguna brahman due to the blessings and support of such a, his his grace the person can go further and become atman so dvaita bhavana is there 
in the sadhana portion. So, the, see, in, in that uh, thing is uh, Bhaita Bhavana, as be, see, we don't see the one Atman hiding in us, right? At this point. So, we don't see that oneness because we are in the lower level, Rajasic level. We are not in the pure Sattvic level. So, this Dvaita Bhavana will go away only after the grace of that Lord, according to Shankaracharya and, and good parts of the uh, Bhagavad Gita Bhasha with the Shlokas also support Shankaracharya. This is a complex thing. You have to analyze this from different views to understand what exactly it means. But for Shankaracharya, Dvaita Bhavana is allowed till a person goes beyond Bhakti, beyond everything and that goal is far away now. Don't worry about the goal. But Dheda is accepted to Shank is acceptable to Shankaracharya in every aspect of the path people are taking, whether it is Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, it doesn't matter. The path, during the path, there is difference between the seeker and that which is sought. Okay. So, uh, as per Sri Shankaracharya as well, uh, till the uh, Maya exists for anybody, for mm -hmm. any uh, Jeeva, uh, mm -hmm. till that time there is still Dvaita. Correct. And uh, once he uh, crosses that, it, there, it, there is no Dvaita. Correct. You're right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, one more uh, meaning can be given, Krishna, here. Mm -hmm. uh, there are four types of devotees, are there, Nani being the highest. Yes. Probably. Probably uh, the grace of the Lord or uh, Saguna Brahman uh, is required until that point. See, here, I think, you know, these are very good questions. You, Shankaracharya himself answers the question in one of the shlokas. Why don't I take the shloka next time and explain to you what exactly Shankaracharya means? Uh, unless a one person surrenders to the Lord, the Dvaita Bhavana does not go, he says. He says, one has to totally surrender to the Lord and with the only with the, with the prasada or anugraha of that Brahman, Atma or, or Krishna here, one person loses the Dvaita Bhavana or difference. So you need the grace to lose the, uh, the Dvaita Bhavana according to the, the next Shankar Bhasha itself, I think. I have gone through it. Now I'm, it's a little bit uh, late for me to go find out which verse he talks about in this way. So Shankara Bhaksha has to be understood here. Okay? Dvaita Bhavana exists till the last moment, according to Shankara Chari. That is why Jnana Nishta is not a path. Jnana Nishta is the goal. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right then. Hope if there is no, if you have questions, write down and send it to the Gita Telegram um, channel. I'll try to look at it and answer when I know what I mean how to answer. Otherwise, Asmat Guru Bhav Mahatma Karma Guru Bhav Mahatma Karo Guru Bhav Mahatma Krishna Guru Bhav Mahatma Mahatma Rakshmi Sama Guru Bhav Mahatma Rakshmi Haya Vadana Guru Bhav Mahatma Karma Sri Krishna Sama Thank you. Namaskaras. Namaskaras. Namaskaras.